hello hello we we are alive we are alive just barely uh good to see you good to see you balls of glory thank you appreciate the oil up we thought you died uh i've been i've been further away from death in my life i'll say that i've been much further away see you later balls so you're telling me that this stream is a small chicken and cheese meal with a Coke Zero instead of a medium McCrispy meal with a Coke? That, that is a pretty solid interpretation of my words, yes. Um, yeah, so I thought I was going to be sick for like three days at the most and I am still uh, in a bad way. So, <laughs> so uh, I these streams are just filler streams, I suppose. I... Um, I thought I would be, I thought I'd be over it by now, but I am, I am not. Last night was probably the worst night yet. Uh, so, uh, at risk of sounding like I'm complaining too much over the flu, um, I am sick and tired, and I'm just here to say hello and keep the streak, and uh, that's what it's all about at the end of the day. Where's my multiverses? Do I... Did I uninstall... You know what? I I came to a terrifying realization yesterday. Um, and that realization was... I had zero gigabytes of free space on my SSD. Now, that is not a nice realization to come to. Because I was editing yesterday. And I was like, why the fuck is everything so slow right now? Why is... Why is After Effects just not working? Why, why, why are all these... I can't even open a YouTube web page without something kind of like glitching. And, and then I checked and I had zero gigabytes. So did I... I had to un, uninstall a bunch of stuff. No, I still have Multiverses downloaded, so... Illnesses are literally worse than being stabbed. Haven't been stabbed before, so hard to gauge. Hard to gauge. Um... <clears throat> Hey, no offense to this whatsoever, but I was kind of hoping that you were just going to drop dead last night as yesterday's stream title. That's horrible. <laughs> That's terrible. Thanks. Appreciate it. Isaiah editing. Stop lying. Now, I was editing. I was rotoscoping. All right. Believe it. I wish I could show you it, but there is a, a spoiler in my... In my uh, in what I was rotoscoping, but it's cool. I, uh, it's, you know what, as somebody who really hates masking, the, uh, process of rotoscoping is a little bit less painful now that there's, like, AI tools. So, actual W for AI, um, well, I still have to manually fix a bunch of shit, but as a general thing, it's made it a little less time-consuming. Um, rotoscoping in a Bruce and Robert episode terrifies me. Yeah, I had an idea, and then as per usual, the idea ended up being a larger ordeal than I originally predicted. Um, where'd your badge go? Yeah, where did your badge go? Oh, did it reset the, the sub, like, badge thing? What? So what, does it do that on the 25th? That's whack. What the heck? I didn't authorize this. Oh, yeah, and then I wake up this morning, and I think, why am I logged out of Twitch? This is weird. Oh, why am I logged out of Twitter? This is weird. I thought everything had been hacked or something. Well, what the flinkle is right, Ludacris? That's what I was thinking. Um, and so I was like, okay, so I don't have the energy for this right now, but I suppose I better check to see... That, that the French haven't taken over my accounts again. Because they do like to do that, apparently. Uh, but no, it was all fine. I think... I, what I'm starting to think is... I don't know exactly if this is how it works, but... Maybe because I had... No, this, this literally couldn't be it. I, my thinking was that because I had no SSD space... Cookies couldn't save... Maybe, but it wasn't that. It wasn't that. I just think my cookies reset. I think that happens every couple of months, so we're good. God doesn't want you to record Lego Batman 2. It feels like it. I hate that I just <clears throat> applied for partner, was getting a lot of progress done with the next few videos, and announced the next stream game, and then I got sick. It's very cool. Very, very epic. 
Um, I really like that. But, you know, I can't complain. I can't complain. Uh, I was sick so often previously that... W look, I'll hand... I'll take this, honestly. I will take this over that. Um, but I just, yeah, when I've... Usually I can tell, like, I, I thought I could gauge that this wasn't going to be a particularly long sickness, but it's uh, sticking around, unfortunately. Uh, <clears throat> appreciate it, Lemons. Trying my best. Yeah, it's true, Alexa. It would suck to stop um, in the middle of it. I, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, oh man, you, you ever felt delusional from a fever before? Like, I actually, oh my god, man. I swear, oh, I, I don't know, I think I was like talking in my sleep last night. I don't know what happened. I was, yeah, it was, it was ruthless. It was ruthless. I absolutely hate that feeling so much. I, uh, oh yeah, and I don't need to go into the excruciating details. I'm sure you've had the flu before. Um. What actually is the next stream game, by the way? Lego Batman 200%. So, uh, you know, it's heating up in here. It's heating up. Working even while sick. It is Isaiah who is truly built different. I mean, I can sit here and talk for 30 minutes, you know? Um, this is why the streak is good, because I just wouldn't have streamed previously. Well, I guess you could argue that this is why the streak is bad, but... It, it's I, I wouldn't have streamed previously, but I, I definitely can do this for like 30 minutes. So I don't see why not, you know? Um, so the streak's keeping me on track. Keeping me, uh, it's keeping me streaming. It's keeping me consistent. Didn't go to work today as I got second degree burns from two hours of sun exposure. Do you live in Australia flight? It's winter here at the moment, so the sun's not as crazy, but it'll still, it'll sting you. It'll get you. Worst sunburn I ever had was like... I want to say like grade 8 camp or something like that. Everybody got so badly burnt. Well, most people got so badly burnt that... That night at camp when we went to have dinner... They split us into two tables. One table was the non-burnt people and the other was the people with horrible sunburn. Um... So, I don't know. I feel like that's a little discriminatory, but anyway, we'll move on from that. Uh, very, yeah, awful. And and we had to sleep on, like, these leather, these cheap leather mattresses as well. I, Im imagine making a fucking mattress out of leather. I know that it's, like, ch I, well, it's probably not real leather, so it's probably the cheaper option. But Jesus Christ, man. Easier to clean as well, maybe, is the reason. But it's it that should be a crime. That should be a crime. I, I still remember the feeling of my back sticking to it. Not a good experience. Not good. As a ginger myself, all I get is sunburns. The sun is my mortal enemy. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got pretty fair skin as well, so I, I gotta watch out. Gotta be careful, especially here. Oh my god. We ha don't we have the highest skin cancer rate in the world or something? <laughs> I think we do. How do you survive in Australia? With great difficulty. Great difficulty. That's nice to hear, Shrimp. I envy that first playthrough of Red Dead 2. I would never want to forget my first playthrough of Red Dead 2, though. It was it was special as it was, you know? I, don't, I know people say, like, they want their memory wiped to experience the game they love for the first time again, but... My first experience with Red Dead 2 was just so good. It came at, like, the perfect time. I, uh... Oh, man, I still remember getting into... Oh, I was staying up so late. Getting into Chapter 2 for the first time. Rolling into Valentine. Oh, my God. I had no idea that that would be a, a, a change in my life. Right there. But I still remember. Oh, man, what a, what a good time. I, I remember, like... Uh, a bunch of friends of mine got the game on the on the day as well, and we were just like texting each other with what we were finding. Oh, the mystery around when a game first, like a Rockstar game, comes out, and you're like figuring everything out and seeing all the yeah different locations and stuff. It's unparalleled. It's unbelievable. GTA Six is gonna be crazy. What morality was your first playthrough? I uh, I did a good boy playthrough. 
I, I definitely did some bad things, but overall, good boy playthrough. I'm surprised by how fast I finished the game. I think I clocked it in about... I think I clocked the main story. This might be a misremembering, but I swear I did it in like two weeks or something. I was playing a lot. Playing a lot of that game. Do you stop? Oh no, I didn't stomp any hands off cliffs. I was main like mainly uh, when a new Rockstar game comes out, which I've only experienced relatively close to release or on release like twice with... Well, see, I didn't even really play GTA 5 on release, but uh, the thing that I that I test is the law system. So, like, GTA 5, I remember, blew my mind because they had, like, the, uh, the cones of vision that you had to, like, dodge, and it felt... It felt way cooler when it came out. GTA 5's law enforcement system is a little flawed, but overall pretty cool. Uh... And then, so I did the same thing with Red Dead 2. I was, that's what I spent a lot of the time testing is like, can you kill somebody in the mountains and then just not get wanted? Or can you like, I don't know, all of that sort of stuff, right? Sorry, my brain's not working right now, but you get what I'm saying. Uh, Red Dead 2 was, it had the illusion of being really cool at first, but I think, I think Red Dead 2 kind of has a bit of a, a little bit its law system was a little bit of a letdown i think it could have been way cooler it was just too convoluted i think uh nakey jakey has a big portion of his video about that um which i definitely agree with it's 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 there's too many like it's uh i, I don't know why they it makes me think like a lot of the thing that happens with rockstar games a lot i think is they're they're so like gameplay wise and and Every system is so polished, it feels, like, unbelievably good to play. But then, it feels like a lot of their more immersive elements are so surface level. And it's like, I would rather you just take some extra time to get these, like, really, really polished, really fun to interact with. Because they're fun at first a lot of the time, but you sort of realize how see-through they are given a couple of a days, a couple of weeks, you know? Um, which sucks. Like, the Red Dead 2 law system felt deep, but then as soon as I learnt the rules around it roughly, I was like, oh, this is actually kind of annoying. Which sucks. I did see his follow-up video, yeah, it was really good. He makes great stuff. <coughs> Watching from a laundromat right now, that's the shit. Wash those clothes. Clean up. <laughs> I don't think it's, like, terrible or anything, but it's a letdown. Like, you've got... Oh, I could talk about it all day, but I feel like Rockstar does that a lot. Really, really cool, really, really polished, but some of the more immersive elements are a little... Like, why is it here? It's a little lackluster in... Like, in practice... When you're actually practically using it. Like, camp system... They really fucked that up in Red Dead 2, I think. Because literally the only incentive around upgrading the camp is to see what, like, the upgrades look like half the time. And, and, and even more so apply that thought to giving money to the camp, like, and, and, like, getting food for the camp. All of those should have had, they should have had higher consequences for, higher consequences for not engaging with it and, and higher rewards for going out of your way, you know? They really, uh, I feel like they really, I, I remember I made a tweet a couple of months ago about when I was playing Baldur's Gate 3 for the first time, I was amazed by like how simple the camp system was, but how it actually made me want to interface with it. Like it was, it had some gameplay purpose. It was really fun to sort of like, uh, figure all out, figure all of its little elements out and then use it to your advantage, you know? That was great. That's not how some people play the game. Yeah, but it's... They make it seem like such an integral part of the open world experience. And then it's just like... I don't know. It wasn't enough for me. On my first playthrough it was. But Red Dead 2 is very much a game where... Subsequent playthroughs expose uh, some weak points. Like, the game is not... 
I would say like when I first played the game, it was a 10 to me. And now it's like not a 10. You know what I mean? Like, and that's hard to say because the things that the game does well are industry leading, genre defining. But there's just certain parts of like the actual gameplay, uh, you know, mechanics and the flow of everything that just kind of, you know, it's still like a 9, but a 10? I don't know. There's too many gameplay things that don't work for me. And doing, doing TGB has really just, like, I will never knock the game for not allowing me to do some things that just, like, make sense, but TGB has exposed me to a lot of, like, okay, the game is actually quite shallow in this way, which is a shame, you know? 9.5, you damn heretic? Maybe. Honestly, I'm somebody who looks at, like, an 8 as, like, a very, very good game that has flaws, you know what I mean? Uh, or, or, like, has some some flaws that really stand out. I feel like uh, I could... I feel like I could call Red Dead 2 an 8.5. I st and I genuinely still think it's one of the best games of all time. But I would probably call it a 9, just because that sounds less... Um, it, it, that sounds less like blasphemy, you know? What's a 10 game for you? I don't know. I actually don't know. Maybe like... Like, it's kind of subjective to the genre and the, the game itself, I feel like. Rating scales have lost authenticity. Yeah, it's hard. It, because an 8 is different to everybody, basically. Um... I remember doing a game review early, early on when I started uploading. I did a game review of uh, Outer Worlds, and I just really enjoyed the game. But I remember giving it an arbitrary score of 8, and it's like, my conception of what an 8 game is these days is so different to literally, like, this was only like four years ago. But I'm like, what are you talking about, buddy? What is that? <laughs> no, it's not. It, I enjoy the game. I think it's I think it's cool, but it's a seven, brother. It might even I don't know. It's a seven. Cause I don't even think like I think six is getting close to bad, but six is still like I'll play this, you know? To me. Like five is five and below is we're getting into terrible territory, you know? Plants vs zombies might be a ten. Maybe. It's possible. Lego Batman? Lego Batman, for its genre, is that a 10? It's probably not a 10. There's some things that I don't love about it, but... Great game. I think, like, the score itself doesn't matter. Your reasoning for giving it a, sort of, a certain score matters more, I think. Here's the thing, Reddit 2 has a lot, a lot of flaws, and this might be kind of shallow for me to say, but I kind of don't give a shit. I feel like I remember you saying this, CJ. I think we've spoken about this before, and I kind of I kind of agree with you. I think especially when you're not when you're not uh, hyper analyzing, micro analyzing every last bit. I think like the experience is so smooth, especially on that first run through. That the flaws that come with looking deeper at the game kind of don't matter exactly. There's a whole part that I cut out of TGB uh, 12, the most recent one. Um, there's a whole part I cut out where I spoke about, like... Look, let me see if I can find my script for it. Because uh, I can't really put the thought together the same way at the moment. Let me see if I can find it. I was just talking about, like... God, where is it? I have so many copies of the same script with minor changes. This is not a good organization method. Was it script five? Let's check script four. Uh, Hauser? Oh yeah, okay. So there's a part here. Um, I removed this entire part, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but the, the part of the script goes, there's a quote from Dan Hauser in an interview he did with The Guardian way back in 2013 that discusses Rockstar's game design a little bit. And there was something he said that resonated a lot with me. And then I go through his quote, which is very long, but I'll read it anyway. 
Game reviewing, when it sort of breaks down into checklists, you feel like you may as well have made a lawnmower. It feels odd to me. I mean, games are sort of like a machine in some ways, but I still think that's a strange way to think about them. Don't think about the graphics or the music or whatever. Just think about the whole. Was the experience engaging? That's what we're going for. We tailor our stories and our mission designs to make this total experience that will feel good alongside the graphics, alongside the physics. It should all feel cohesive. It should feel that the whole world exists and you can't really separate the elements. It's all got to gel together. That's when we think we've been successful. When you, when you listen to their design philosophy, like making, it, it makes sense why Rockstar Games, their, that first playthrough, it's, that's what they, that's what they're trying to really make sure hits. It's not when you go back afterwards and you're like picking different things apart sure you can find a bunch of things that don't quite work but it's hard to argue that when you first play a rockstar game it's like wow it's a new rockstar game is it's hard to it's hard to get a similar feeling in across gaming in general um it doesn't mean that you can't find flaws like um wait is somebody leaving sorry if i missed that see you later digital appreciate it dude um, like, Nakey Jakey's video is just such a good example because we were kind of on opposite sides of the spectrum, so his video was a little bit of a controversial one to make at the time. I think a lot of people forget that. When he released his Red Dead video, Red Dead had only been out for, like, a couple of months, I think. Let me see. Um, when was it? It was, de it was December 18, 2018, so I'm pretty sure Red Dead 2 came out in September so literally like two months after the game came out so it was kind of a controversial thing to say at the time about the game um I'm not sure if he received any like I'm sure he received some everybody does but uh I'm, I'm not sure what the like pushback was on it at the time I can't remember but he was bringing up a lot of things where I didn't notice them on my first playthrough and I don't think I watched this video until I had well and truly finished the game um so it was like, he was playing, what he was looking for out of the game immediately wasn't what it gave. And so all of these issues were super glaring to him on that first playthrough. And that kind of means to him, like despite the philosophy of not wanting to have separate elements uh, focused on and more so making a cohesive thing. It's like to him, the game kind of failed in that way and so you know that, that's why everybody has a different opinion about different games and whatever but i just i find it interesting that i i didn't really look at red dead 2 from like an analytical perspective when i first played it at all i was just cruising through i mean i think i wrote about this later in the video as well which i also cut out i uh yeah i say i say it here i was like um I think Rockstar was successful for the most part. Breaking down these missions into the finest minutia is not something I did on my first playthrough. I would have spent my first experience of magicians for sport in awe of the fighting mechanics, uh, fighting mechanics alone, and the intrigue of the narrative would have driven me forward in a way that I was barely cognizant of the transition from open world to story mission. This game is more than the sum of its parts, and I do hope blah blah blah. Me just trying not to sound like an arsehole. Uh... But I still can't help but feel that Rockstar were on the cusp, and this mission was a great example. God, this is messy, but I was trying to get something across here. Uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I basically just start going into the examples of why Magicians for Sport as a mission just kind of goes against their design philosophy. But I managed to get this general point across without reading the long quote and stuff like that. I think the final version of this video is much better. Um... This is a red vest, brown vest mission, Panda. Um, but yeah. Um, what did I say here? This blending of elements, this focus on cohesion, seems very important to the wider design philosophy at Rockstar. And I think that just goes to show how complicated of a balance it is to strike on such a mammoth of a project. Um, I just hope that this is an aspect of the Rockstar formula that evolves in the titles to come. Because an experience in which they nail their mission gameplay to the same degree that they nail their open worlds would be truly unbelievable. Facts, brother. Completely agree. 
<laughs> you make great speeches. You should host funerals. Hey, hosting funerals is a tough gig. I, I, uh, I appreciate that. Enjoy stuff by being ignorant. I don't really think it's about that either. I just think like, I think to me, with the way that Rockstar made Red Dead 2, they succeeded, right? Because my first playthrough was like, I was in awe of everything. I was like, everything felt possible. Everything felt polished. It felt like there was no limit to what could happen. And then, but to somebody who was looking for something different in the game, they were looking for a, an innovation in other areas. Like, I was just along for the ride, basically. But if you did, if you were looking for something else, like Nakey Jakey clearly was when he made this video and he played the game for the first time, they're going to be glaring, right? So that's why I, I truly do believe that, like, sometimes... I, I mean, it's hard to give, like, an objective score to anything. Like, I feel like that's on a spectrum... Like, I feel like you could never give Red Dead 2 less than a 7. I really feel like you couldn't. I, I, I feel like ser you seriously could not do that. But at the same time, this game could definitely be a 7 or a 10, depending on who you are. You know? And depending on what you're looking for. Anything lower than a 7, I think you're being crazy. But, I don't know. Ahem. <clears throat> Everybody brings something different to the table when it comes to art. This is why I'm not... I could never really... I never really enjoyed doing reviews. Like, I made a couple, and I've done some in my time. But I don't really like doing them. Because I can never... It's it's a weird balance of trying to... like. I hate trying to walk the tightrope of like pointing out what's objectively good and what's objectively bad, and then pointing out, like, why something works for me. Th that's a process that I just don't really like in general. I guess you could look at TGB in a way as, like, a like a, a retrospective at this point of Red Dead 2 mechanically, but it's, it's not really the focus. I don't really like trying to review things i don't know at least like i would rather write about why something works for me rather than try to like boil something down to an objective uh it can't be objective but you get what i mean boil something down to like a a number that's i, I don't know you're, you're condensing like so many thoughts into one number it just doesn't really it doesn't really work for me i don't know go back to the ign reviews it could happen <clears throat> When are you going to do another character analysis from 52 years ago? I've dabbled with the idea. I think there's a way to make character analysis videos a little bit more fun. Um, like, I had a, a couple of series ideas, but as with a lot of stuff, they didn't really work out. I think character analysis videos, like, are really fun, but a lot of the time it's, uh, it's done in a super, like, I don't know, like a purely analytical format, and it's... Uh, I don't know. They sort of fall into the same vibe. I think I could go back and do them slightly different. Still find it funny your most popular video is still the microanalysis. Um, technically not true. Most popular video is the TGB short. So take that. I'm still on top. I didn't fall off. The frig. They can present themselves as quite dry. Yeah, because, like, usually... People usually have, like, a format where it almost feels like they're presenting the character as a real person, almost, which is really cool, but it's it's been done a lot. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Post-TGB world. How, much, how, much, how many views does that short have at this point? I love how that one got 3.6 million views, and then the other one got 25k. You just, you just can't... You can't guess what's going to happen. I'm done trying to predict numbers. I've been, I haven't really done that for a while. Some things just hit and others do not. Seems to be a lot of things that exist in a post TGB world. TGB, I'm not going to go down this rabbit hole, but it is genuinely such a behemoth to me. And I have so many plans for it that uh, until it's done, like it eclipses everything else, basically. Um, and that's why. But the way that I've been doing things isn't really 
reflective of that. Like, it's not... I haven't really been operating in a way that would reflect that, so that's why when I finish Bruce and Robert, I am locking down and finishing it to the end. Um, because I just want it, I just want it done. I just want it to finally be done. I want to rip these sticky notes off my wall, you know? That's my, uh, that's my light at the end of the tunnel. And again, like, I don't want that to ever come across as, uh, like, me wanting it to be done is me just wanting it to be, like, out there, completed in the world. Not that I want to rush through it and just have it out of the way. You know what I mean? How big's the wall? It's a floor to almost ceiling mirror. Um, sliding mirror. And it's covered in sticky notes. Which is silly. I feel like a crazy person. <clears throat> and, like, a lot of it is just stuff to remind me of different threads, but... I gotta say, nothing's really there for no reason, like, yeah, I don't know. We spoke about this before, but, like, in any, any time I've ever written anything, I never really was the planner, like, I just kind of wrote and would see where things would go, but for something as big as this, and especially since there's had, there's had to be a, a few things I've had to correct and sort of just, uh, move on from, from the previous era of TGB, I guess, uh, I have to get my thoughts in order. I don't know if I've always been this way, but it's harder for me to collect all of my thoughts and hold them in one place. So I guess I probably have always been that way a little bit. So introducing some sort of planning system has been very helpful. I don't think I could do the series without it, to be honest. <clears throat> do visitors who don't understand the whole YouTube thing as a career think you're a schizo? No, people who don't, fully know of the whole like youtube realm they i think they just kind of don't know like they're just unimpressed you know but most people these days kind of get the idea i think it would have been harder in like the 2010s you know to sort of explain it which part of tgb takes the longest the recording the story or the editing the editing 100 percent, because the editing is like where a lot of Honestly, the way that I do things is, like, really annoying, but I'll, I'll record, this is the whole process. I'll record the footage. I'll chop up the footage and take notes on the footage. So I'll have, like, a page of notes about everything that happens with timestamps in each recording for the entire, like, episode, right? So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll go through there and I'll take notes on the whole thing so I know exactly what happens at what point, and then I can easily scrub through and take any piece that I need. Then I, uh, I start writing the script, and then I get a couple of drafts together, usually about two, and then I'm like, okay, so now I can start sort of mapping this together. So once I have a draft that feels, and I still call it a draft because I'll explain why in a second, I start voice recording the draft, but I'm, I'm recording it as if it's a final, right? Because usually that second or third draft is pretty close to final, but the, the leg isn't over yet. Because when I record all of that, I go in and I start doing a really rough edit. So I'm adding footage to the voice, putting everything where it needs to go. And then I go, okay, here is my draft of the episode. And it's usually, it's got no effects. It's got a bunch of missing elements. But I'm, then I go through the entire finished draft of the edit and take notes on a separate page about the edit. Everything that doesn't work, everything that needs to be changed, everything that needs to be added, and then so on and so forth. And then... The final edit begins but it's like there might be entire sections that need to be rewritten there might be entire and and so then they need to be re-recorded it's like that final edit is it, it's like it's basically a combination of re-recording rewriting re-editing and and then on top of that you have the final final edit which is when nothing is to be changed but everything is to be polished basically so like Audio levels need to be tweaked. Music needs to be... Uh, the music level needs to be tweaked. Voice, all of that. 
maybe you've got like a placeholder text or something that needs to be replaced with its final something like that right and then that's the very end that's the end of the process um and somewhere in there you make a thumbnail and somewhere in there you cry and and you wallow because it's not as good as you thought it would be and people are gonna hate it and and you ball your eyes out and you realize you've attached too much of your self-worth to an external thing and then you press upload and everything is right with the world again. It's a it's a it's a fun time. It's good. It's good. It's good for you. You got to do a lot of soul searching. It's a fun time. Editing is basically the final rewrite, but while you're doing that, you're also creating the visual element. So uh, the time it takes to write the script is basically baked into the editing process. Yeah, for sure. And it's not like that for every video, but when you're working on something, well, it kind of is like that down but on a smaller scale. But when you're doing something big, when you're, when you're like, uh, I don't know, when you're working on something really long, it's just, to get something cohesive together feels just almost insurmountable every time. But you always come out on the other end. And it's like, it's something, right? I'll never forget working on TGB 10 and just think that was the hardest because I was trying to establish the style for the series going forward and, I was trying to figure out, like, what sort of format do I want this to be in as opposed to how it was before, and that was, like, a whole pro. That's why that, that I mean, that one took so fucking long. I was working on that for ages, and uh, it's so detrimental to run a channel this way, but it's, it's such a great feeling to look at those videos and go, man, everything was poured into that. I've spoken about this a million times, but, like, that was the best thing I could make at that time, and I'll still be able to watch that in... 10 years maybe and look back on it and be like hell yeah that w that was i really tried with that one that's a good feeling it's nice to uh see yourself slowly like i'm somebody who has to feel as if they're progressing as well if i don't feel like i'm becoming better at the, each of the different things that i do i'm just like there goes my motivation basically so i have to feel like i'm progressing at something and like I don't know, I, I just, it has to be, I can't just have, like, synthetic progression. Like, a bigger number, or like, more views or more subscribers or something, like, that. I feel like that used to be a little bit of, like, it would give the same sort of feeling. Like, you would be, oh, that's, that's 100k more views, like, you would get the same sort of hit, almost. But I just, I don't know what's changed, but in the last few years, that's just become less and less of a thing, and I'm just, like, way more interested in making the best possible thing that I can. And if I haven't improved in some area, I'm disappointed. I'm just like, it, it's, it's not given the same, it's not given the same feeling. They used to kind of be synonymous and I could replace one with the other, but it doesn't, doesn't really work. It's always a good feeling to look over old writing and not cringe. Yeah, that's a, that's a chaseable feeling as well. Like, uh, looking, actually being able to look at something from a year ago and not be like, that was fucking terrible. That's good. I like that. Feels good. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah. Sorry, I probably sound terrible right now. I probably shouldn't stream. I probably sound disgusting, but you're stuck with me. What can I say? What can I do? What can I say? <clears throat> Character development, that's it. Play Lego Batman 2 as soon as soon as I'm good. We're doing it. I'm telling you, it's gonna happen. But I, I literally can't. I, I, I just can't record something like this. It's gonna kill me. Has the tea gone cold? It has. Very disappointing. Drawing streams. I could. I literally couldn't draw any. I'm actually. Tr I'm trying to get back into drawing. I used to draw a lot when I was younger. I was never particularly good, but I think I was creative. Um, yeah, I sounded awful yesterday. Um, but yeah, I've been trying to get back into drawing just like a 20, 30 minutes a day. Um, actually trying to like improve. I have kind of like a superstition about learning. I don't know how much of a superstition it is, but like I feel this is going to sound weird. Okay. Promise I'm fine, but... I feel, I feel more mentally 
well when I'm like in the process of learning something. Like again, I think it's this whole it's this whole like trying to develop a skill or get better at something. Th there's it gives me like a certain feeling that I can't replicate. I used to be able to what I th I think I used to game a lot more because I used to it was again it was like a synthetic form of that. So like if I got an achievement in a game or something, it was like the same feeling. And so I was like, "Oh, yes." And, I, and so I used to game a lot more than I do now. But now I only game for fun. So I game a lot less, right? So it's like, I can't get that same feeling through synthetic means anymore. So I can't get it through playing a game and or getting an achievement in a game or anything like that. But when I apply it to uh, like drawing or like just trying to get better at something, it's so, it's like, it's, yeah. Does that make sense? I don't know if I'm making sense. Let me know. That T is definitely old. Bro used to game more when it wasn't his full-time job. That's true. I mean, but listen. But I feel like I'm... I feel like I'm being more productive because I feel like I'm building something. Like, this is... This, this can get toxic real quick because... I've definitely fallen into the, like, always have to be productive, not happy unless productive mindset, which is, like, destructive as all hell, but, um, and ironically enough, you get less done in that mindset, but anyway, that's a whole other thing, but it's, like, when I, when I'm just playing a game on Twitch, or even, to an extent, even just sitting here right now, like, I'm, I'm contributing to something that I'm trying to build, which feels good, like, I'm trying to build the Twitch up, trying to stay consistent with something. I feel like that's all building towards something, which feels good. But, uh, I mean, look, if you, I, this is not a tutorial. I'm not telling you how to live your life, but I definitely, I just can't get that same thing from like, uh, just like consuming entertainment anymore, for example. Like that's just for, that's, that has to just be purely for entertainment or for fun. <clears throat> thought this was a life adobe channel don't even say the word adobe why did that have to why did that have to auto correct to adobe i'm sick of adobe you know what they oh my oh man i was about to lose my mind yesterday fucking adobe you know what they you know what they've done you know what adobe has done that recently has pissed me off every day i get closer to just risking the virus and getting a cracked version of adobe i like, I've given them the benefit of the doubt. I'm like, this is great software. It's most of the time. It's really not. But anyway, the software I need to keep this ship afloat, I'll fucking pay for it, all right? I get the updates. I don't I don't get virus. I don't, I'm very paranoid about viruses. Man, I, I don't even click links that I send myself, dude. I'm that paranoid. So it's like, fine, whatever. I'll, I'll pay the money. It's okay. But you know what they've done? They've made it so if you look up something about Adobe, so like, how do I do this in Premiere Pro? Usually what you'll get, and again, I'll, I'll search through Reddit first, but if I can't find it on Reddit, <coughs> I have to do a general Google search. So how to do this on Premiere Pro. Okay. What will usually come up is a bunch of pages from the Adobe support thing, where it's like a forum where people who have experienced a similar problem will go, Oh, uh, yeah, I've experienced this problem, blah, 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 right? It's on the Adobe page. If you want to read the contents of those pages now, you have to log into Adobe. I don't want to do that. I'm quickly looking for a, for a solution. I don't want to sit there and search for my Adobe password, which I haven't used in three and a half fucking years. I don't, I don't want to try to remember what email is associated with the account. I just want to see the solution. And you know what the worst part is as well? Is that sometimes, most of the time, it's not even the right fucking solution. So I'm potentially logging into this web page with my Adobe account to read something that isn't even going to help me. Why not just stay logged in? That's the other thing. I swear I did the one time that I did go searching for my password and found it. And next time I opened up a fucking Adobe page, they wanted me to log in again. So I might just have to start throwing elbows. I don't know. I might get violent. 
I think it's justifiable. <laughs> we all know Remember Me never works. You know, you know who else is fucked up with that? Rockstar Games Launcher. Shouldn't exist. It's always the platforms that shouldn't exist, too. It's unbelievable. Rockstar Launcher never remembers me. God forbid I ever have to log into Epic Games because that never does either. Um, what else? Lay them out for me. Fucking ridiculous. I'm paying an arm and a leg to edit videos together here, Adobe. Don't fuck with me. The minute that I get over my paranoia of accidentally downloading a virus is the minute I get a cracked version of Adobe Premiere Pro 2024 and just never, ever upgrade ever again. I'm sure there's people out there still using fucking 2011 Adobe. Who gives a fuck? I'm sure there is. There's probably somebody here right now. How many people are in here? Not many. 36. One of you is still using 2011 Adobe. I guarantee, I almost guarantee it. Or at least, like, 2015 or something. There's somebody. Maybe don't incriminate yourself, but I know you're here. I can see you. Um, <laughs> I got 2016. This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. The minute I get over my, uh, my paranoia, you're done. You're done. And you know what? My bank account will be better for it. So... What can I say? <coughs> what do you want? When did it... What was the first version of Premiere Pro? Um, 1991. Somebody's out there using 1991. Oh no, Premiere Pro by name was 2003. Well, same token. I mean, somebody's using the 2003 version. You know, uh... Only slightly related, but... You know the movie Parasite? Still haven't seen it. Is it a myth that that was... Uh... That was cut together using fucking, like, Final Cut Pro? <laughs> from decades ago or something? Used Final Cut Pro 7. That's wild. I think it actually was. Yeah, that's the type of mindset I need to adopt. All of this AI rotoscoping doesn't even. I've, I've, I'm doing all the fucking work anyway. <clears throat> if it works, it works. Yeah. Yep. That's it. It's not the uh, tool. It's the man. Got to save that money. What have I been telling you? Are you and Laser Beam related? You sound similar. Probably because we come from the same country. Also, like. Since when is being related to anybody mean that you sound like them? What do I mean? Mimics out here? Just use Filmora? No, because... The thing is, is like, I think Da Vinci's like the one exception. Oh, there's probably other exceptions out there. But I feel like a lot of the time people say, I'll oh, just use this free version of something as if I didn't spend five years using the free versions of things. And they just weren't as good. Like... I'm, like, I used Photo P up until fucking, like, three years ago. I'm not going back, all right? I've been there. It hurts. It hurts. I think up until the, uh, the... Where is this? Up until the Toy Story 3 video, I think I was still... Maybe even just a little after that. I think... No, you know what? Honestly, I think the first video I ever made on the PC with proper programs might have been what if Red Dead 2 had GTA 5's character switch. Actually, no, it can't even be that. It might have been Cyberpunk 1899. Somewhere around that era. Um, Photo P is terrible? Yeah, Photo P was... It had its moment. Would you take an Adobe sponsorship? Unironically, probably not. <laughs> I feel like... Adobe has a very bad reputation, and it's only getting worse. I love when a company wants all of my personal information to train AI. That's sick. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. My friend was at work the other day, and when they looked out their window, they saw through another window that their work is right next to Laserbeam's office. Wait, what? Jesus. Doxed. Dead. Simple as that. Keep your windows closed, people. 
You need to adopt my level of paranoia, okay? I want to see some Uber keys. I want to. I want to see the lot. Photo P on a heavily restricted school computer shouldn't exist. Yeah, Photo P is wild, dude. Photo P is wild. Photo P. I it, my combination was Photo P and Hit Film Pro. Oh man, oh man, what a time. We're going back. I used Filmora Go for so long and it was terrible. The audio of each clip automatically faded at the start. That's so fucked up. That's so disgusting. Have you seen the Superman set photos? I think I did briefly see one. Let me see. I don't know how I feel. Um, let me see. Uh, Superman. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I I saw I saw this one. This looks good. I kind of like this. I'm still just such an anti-line, not line now, sheriff. But an too many lines on a suit makes me annoyed. Like it's just uh, why are they there? Why? Are, what? Are, what are they? But they, it looks good. It overall looks it looks cool. It looks cool. But uh, I, and I like the little collar at the back too. I'm I'm onto that. But what? Why are the lines there? I like the little line on the. You know what I really like about this suit? I really like the. Ah, oh, the belt hoops in the undies. That's beautiful. That's great. That's good stuff. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I like the symbol too. But the lines, man. What are we doing with the lines? I don't like that. I don't know what that is. I think the suit would look genuinely perfect if they ditch the collar and the random lines. I don't mind the collar. Maybe it could go. I think the dude looks great. I think he suits the role very well. Um, but I, I, like, what are we doing with these lines? Don't do they not read Twitter? I guess probably for the best, but I feel like a big portion of the audience base is here, and they 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 pretty much unanimously say, "Can we ditch these lines?" I don't know. Maybe in action, they'll look a little better. Like, I get why... Like, the line craze in superhero suits, that started to add texture, right? Because, like, on camera, if something's too smooth, it kind of looks, like, more cosplay-ish. Like, it looks unofficial, a little a little too... Eh. So they add, like, a bunch of tech... Was that the reason? They add a bunch of textural stuff so that it looks a little better in motion, looks a little bit more official, more real, a bit more high budget. Like, it's a, it's kind of like an illusory thing, right? It, they give everything kind of like a, a Kevlar texture, you know? I swear I read that somewhere. Maybe, I don't know. Don't repeat that. It could be bullshit. But at the end of the day, do away with the lines immediately. What kind of bat suit do you want for the DCU? I just want a cloth suit. I want to, like, uh, Robert Pattinson, I'm glad that's, like, staying its own thing, because I do love that universe and that suit pairing together. I feel like it's perfect, but uh, cloth suit for the DCU, please. If we're going to have two Batman at the same time, which I feel like is kind of annoying, but if we're going to do that, put him in a cloth suit, make it gray, make it black. I, I, I'm kind of on board for blue as well, but I want gray, black, cloth suit. Thank you. With a yellow, um, symbol. Do it, I dare you. Do it, I dare you. It'd be good. My problem with the collar is that it makes the cape look weird as hell around the, his neck. Without the collar, the cape looks like it flow. Yeah, the flow is off. I, I will agree with that. I'll agree with that. <clears throat> They just use the wrong material in older movies with solid color costumes. No, yeah, that's what... I feel like they just have done away with it because of that, but yeah. The Shazam suit is solid red in the movie, and it looked good. I feel like Shazam still had that Kevlar look, though, didn't he? Let me have a look. I swear he still had Kevlaritis. Like, really up close. You, yeah, yeah, he did, he did, he did. There's dots everywhere. And he had... Yeah, 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 yeah. But I will agree, it's one of the less obvious ones. Like, I'll show you this image, right? Uh, 
Where are we? Show you this one. So you see, you see, it's like all. Uh, it's got that. It, it, is it only like this in the second movie though? Maybe. This is from the first. Lovely picture quality from NBC News. Thanks very much for that. Um. First movie, picture. Oh, oh, actually, it's it's still got lines, but it actually looks more clothy. I feel like really up close, high definition though. There's definitely some ribs in there as well, but it's it's. I always thought the suit was pretty good. I always thought they were pretty good. I didn't mind the movie either. <clears throat> pretty good overall. I want a blue bat suit, or I'm not watching the movie. Yeah, man, that bat like blue bat suit looked fucking awful though I think <laughs> kind of put me off kind of made me sick that was just uh, that was a fumble I didn't even bother watching that movie I just don't I don't want to even I don't want to even know I don't want to know um but yeah I uh I think I'll call it here we've been going on almost an hour here that's very surprising and what can I say your, your good conversation um yeah they slapped honeycomb on it in the second movie sick sell more toys go fuck yourself um uh favorite non-marvel dc superhero i'm reading through hellboy at the moment really loving hellboy don't put me on don't get me on a tangent here hellboy is really good hellboy is a really fun character you'd expect like a demon like like a literal demon figure to not have such like a wholesome drive but he does it's very sweet it's very very sweet i'm enjoying it a lot i haven't watched the boys no I obviously love Invincible as well. Invincible's great. I like a lot of the Invincible side characters more than Invincible himself, though, which I guess is probably normal. A lot of them are very likable, but... Um, yeah. Like, I think Adam Eve is genuinely one of the coolest superhero characters. Do you read his lines in Ron Perlman's voice? I actually do, yeah. I only watched the first Hellboy movie when I was a kid, but his voice is still in my head as Hellboy. So, <clears throat> I, I've heard... Excuse me, Jesus. I've heard the the movies aren't that great compared to the comics, but uh, from what I remember, his performance was good enough for me to still think of his voice when I read the uh, the comics. So that's got to count for something, right? <clears throat> you seen the Adam Eve one off episode? Yeah, that's incredible, Alexa. That's a great episode. I still haven't seen season two, but I've seen season one and the one shot of. Uh, Adam Eve, and yeah, it was awesome. Like, uh, <clears throat> I remember uh, that fight scene on the bridge is unbelievable. I've heard the Del Toro movies are great. I haven't gotten around to them yet. Del Toro Hellboy movies? What? What is Del Toro? Maybe this is the one that I watched. The first one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is the this is the one I watched. I recognize it. Apparently, the movies are a very different vibe to the uh, the books, but I can't even remember the books uh, the the movie that much, so can't comment on that. I did finish Fallout. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was good. I uh, D Dead Face was very happy. Dead Face was like I don't know if you know CJ, but this guy was coming in asking me to watch Fallout <laughs> every single every single time. I finally did. And, uh, so he, he basically pushed me to do it, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. It was good. Um, like not perfect, obviously, but I feel like I already said this a bunch of times, but like, I feel like the show was really inconsistent in a bunch of different areas. Like one minute it would be genuinely impressive. And then one minute it would be like, what is going on here? But overall, super, uh, super fun. Especially if you love the games. But I feel like you could have watched it even if you didn't really like the games that much or never played them. Um, finishing Daredevil next before the new Daredevil show next year. I watched uh, season one and two of, of Daredevil on Netflix. Uh, very special place in my heart. Still need to watch season three. We've gone over this, but I don't know if I'll watch the new one. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Hard to get me to watch stuff, man. It's hard to get me in the door. Usually once I'm there, though, I, you know, it's, it's nice trying a bunch of different stuff, but 
I'm really skeptical about the, the Daredevil reboot. I don't know that much about it, but it's sketching me out. It was so cool when <clears throat> they had the whole Netflix thing going on. I felt like the possibilities were endless with that. Now it just feels like pigeonholed into... I don't know. Some like... Like, what is Marvel movies doing at the moment? They're just kind of like... I, I feel like they're kind of taking a step back and trying to reevaluate where they're going with everything. I could be wrong. But I don't really keep up with it, but... Um... Is that the general vibe at the moment? <clears throat> Maybe it's just because I don't interact with it a lot, but it feels like they've kind of pumped the brakes a bit. Trying to give people some room to breathe or something. I don't know. In the whole Marvel movie side of things. Daredevil Season 3 is tied with Guardians 3 as the very best thing in the MCU. Yeah, I've heard good things about Season 3, man. I still haven't seen Guardians 3 either. Um, and I love Guardians 1 and 2. I, again, the list is long. The list is long. Only De Deadpool this year. And Deadpool kind of feels like a bit of a wild card. Like, it's not even exactly... <clears throat> it doesn't feel super MCU-y. You know what I mean? Just kind of doing its own thing, almost. feels like. I'm pretty sure it'll tie in somehow, but... I guess we'll see. I'll probably see it. Um... But yeah, I think I'll call it there, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks uh, for the chat. I appreciate it. I'm sorry for so many filler streams. It is not what the plan was or what I wanted to do. But uh, until I get better, I'm not going to waste footage and, you know, potentially good streams. So we got some, we got this filler stuff, the filler arc of the anime until, uh, until I'm over this. <clears throat> Jesus. <clears throat> Speaking of the... <clears throat> Speaking of the Fallout show. <clears throat> Speaking of the Fallout show. Jesus fucking Christ. Somebody get this man a cough drop. Please. Somebody. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Speaking of the Fallout TV show. The Ghoul. I really like that character. <clears throat> All right, I'm out of here. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea, dude, and try and... I don't know, man. I don't, I don't want to look at Adobe right now, so who could really say? The sky's the limit. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Cheers. Goodbye.